There is a mist into which all tones and shadows melt, like metal cast into a furnace. I'm Professor Mark Horton, and I'm going to explore a derelict section of the Stroud Water Canal that was abandoned over 60 years ago. This is a copy of Bradshaw's Canal and Navigable Rivers of England and Wales from 1909, and it describes in this canal how we've got a towing path throughout the navigation and seven trows and barges carrying up to 75 tonnes. But today, my trip is going to be on a rather smaller boat. Hi! <laughs> Brilliant! Off we go! Great! Our starting point is at Saul Junction, where the Stroudwater navigation leaves the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal. This short arm of canal is all that's left that is connected to the National Canal Network. I've just come to the end of my journey, as far as I can get by boat. There we go. That's as far as we can get. And I've come to meet Val, who's organising the bid to restore the next four miles of canal. Great. Fabulous. So this is the unrestored section of canal. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> Let's find a forger route, shall we? Yes. <laughs> so Val, this is as far as we get with the water. <laughs> it is. So what are the challenges in restoring the next four miles of canal? There's quite a few. I mean, immediately behind us, there's this historic lock. Not a problem because we've got the guys to do it. Beyond that, immediately, there's the challenge of joining the canal into the river. So that's interesting. But beyond that, again, further east, you've got two big new bridges to take the canal under the A38. You've got a new channel to take the canal under the M5 motorway. And further east again, we've got to have a brand new, well, replacement bridge to take the mainline railway over the historic canal. God, what a nightmare! And actually, there's no canal for much of this length anyway. It, yes, that is quite <laughs> That's right. That's the easy bit. That's the easy bit. Between here and the A38, you can find the canal. It's usually in lovely still pools with water lilies and often a heron. Um, uh, from the A38, right the way across beyond the M5, which is what we call, in inverted commas, the missing mile. Because it is, it's just gone. And we've got to find a completely new route and dig it all for new. So why bother all this investment <laughs> to in put in a new section of Four Mile Canal? <laughs> because it's one of England's most important historic cross-country links. If you think about the dangers of taking boats with coal and all sorts of other things down the Bristol Channel, maybe around the south coast of England, and then you think, ah, but we had a link across the Cotswolds. Not only functional, but beautiful. Now that's what we want to restore. And what are the benefits? I mean, you've really restored one section through the middle of Stroud, yeah. which is a canal that's sitting there in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> has that brought great new prosperity to Stroud? It, it has brought an enormous amount of investment to Stroud. If you look at what's happened within 500 metres of the canal in the last three to five years, it's, it's 100 million pounds and more. Um, but of course, that investment really is waiting for this investment. So once this is here, open, people are boating, then anybody on a boat anywhere in England can come up here into Stroud and beyond to the edge of the Cotswolds. And not only that, it's not just boaters, it's local people absolutely love it. Now we've already got people saying, 99% of the people we asked earlier this year are saying that they really want the canal to be finished because they really appreciate what we've already got. Now, you can't argue with that. At least I hope you can't. So hopefully, if this bid is successful, those boats out there on the Sharpness Canal will be able to come up into the heart of Stroud. And beyond. And except, beyond. Yes. What a vision. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. 
So here, we, this is the Whitminster Lock. This is the famous but not very functional Whitminster Lock. Well, it's still, we've still got its mechanism and everything all in place, hasn't it? Nothing much working. Nothing much going. Well, take me on. Take me along the rest of the canal. <laughs> Off we go. <laughs> A four mile walk ahead of us. <laughs> the canal has left a lasting mark on the landscape. From the rope marks cut into the historic ironwork, from the continual passing of canal boats, to the pillboxes left behind when the canal formed the final stop line during the Second World War. But the canal route has also left a lasting natural heritage. I've met Adam Taylor from the Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust. The reason why Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust are so keen to be involved in this project is to show all of the benefits that can be got from a project if you do think a little bit more broadly and involve other partners early on. So in terms of the canal restoration, it's a beautiful navigation, another four miles will be added and it will be linking up the Sharpness Canal to the centre of Stroud. However, as well as that benefit, we can be looking at creating large areas for biodiversity. We will be increasing the flood attenuation, so reducing the risk for people's houses. We'll be sequestering carbon, so we'll be taking that out of the atmosphere and we'll be pro providing recreation so people can come and enjoy these beautiful places. Um, so ultimately, it is about so much more than just the canal. Through working on this project what we're hoping to do is to create large areas of new habitat including wetlands, reed beds and woodlands and for those to be much more accessible than they currently are so although there are a couple of public rights of way running alongside some of these areas we'd be looking to create circular walks for people to come out from main parking points like Framebridge Mill to be able to walk and enjoy it with their families on a Sunday afternoon and even to go out after school, you know, for the kids to actually enjoy the local environment from places like Eastington and Whitminster. At this point, all that is left of the canal is a muddy ditch from what was once a busy wharf. Today, it's busy in a rather different way. So Val, this is your first big challenge. <laughs> this is indeed. Um, here you have a, a roundabout, uh, the A38 and the A419 coming in there. And here we're going to have two brand new bridges. One right in front of us so that the canal will go underneath. And then there'll be a cutting so that the canal will be open to the air. And then the other side, another bridge. And off you'll go. And this is the beginning of the famous Missing Mile. And won't it be wonderful for the people going around the A38 who will see a nice canal? Well, I hope so. OK, well, yeah. I suppose let, let's, let's be purists, shall we, and try and follow the line of the canal. Come on, yes. off we go! <laughs> yep. So here we are, there'll be a bridge here. Yes. And then all we've got is fields. Indeed. So you have to have a, quite a good imagination at this point, Mark, because you go across this field and in the distance you can see the M5. Oh yes, I can see yes, all the cars all going the along cars it. going up and down. So the River Froome is right the way over there along that second boundary. We're going quite close to that and then following it until we go into the motorway. The missing mile. The missing mile. I think we might have to do a diversion at this point. <laughs> Unfortunately, Val and I have to make a lengthy detour at this point. But when the canal and towpath are restored, two communities that were cut off by the motorway will be reconnected. Yeah. So, Val, this is the end of the missing mile. It is. We've come right round, uh, ended our detour, but in five years' time, there'll be a canal from here cutting across this green field towards the river that you can't quite see and then in a new concrete channel right next to the river under the motorway which you can see. So that's an amazing bit of engineering. It to is quite clever. Underneath. Yes. The brilliant thing is of course we don't have to alter the motorway itself so in fact it sounds cheeky and it sounds innovative which it is but it's not all that expensive. And the last bridge is here. And here's this fa fabulous bridge. It's such a amazing it's surviving in the I middle know. of a field. From this surviving bridge, the canal is in rather better shape and still has its water and flourishing wildlife. 
And uh, what's that building well, just that, through there? That is William Morris College, which right. is a Camp Hill community. It was established as a therapeutic community for people with learning uh, right. physical disabilities. Wants to be partners with us in order to help bring people with different levels of ability and disability onto the canal, which we think is brilliant. So there's a community story with the canal. There is indeed. <laughs> Let's walk on. So, well, at last, there was a working canal. Indeed. Well, I mean, not quite here because there's no gates. But if you look further up at Blunderlock, there are gates. And from here until the last really big barrier, you've got a working canal. Now the big barrier is the railway line at the very end where we have to make a new bridge to carry the line over the canal. So that's the big challenge. That's the last Come on, big challenge. Let's go and, okay. go and see it. Hiya! Hello. Hello. <laughs> Oh my god, that's such a barrier, isn't it? This must be the biggest problem you've got. It is. It's the last big barrier. It's the end, the eastern end of 1B. Um, and as you'll see, the hole at the moment for people on foot or on bikes is bigger than the hole for the canal. So how are you going to solve this problem? Well, there's going to be a lot of very heavy duty piling to get the actual foundations in place and then uh, over a couple of weekends, um, a lot of people are going to come along with some re previously constructed bits, slot them into place and bingo, you'll have a new bridge. And why didn't they in the 1960s think of it and when they rebuilt it, put a pr proper bridge there? Well, in the 1960s, it was probably just over 10 years since the canal closed and nobody was thinking about it being reopened, at least not any of the people running the railways. Oh dear, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Anyway, look Mark, I've got to go and do something else. It's been lovely to meet you. If you go through that hole, you'll come out the other side at the end of the already restored bit of canal. Go and enjoy it. That's what we're going to be like in five years time. And thanks for being such a, a magnificent guide. That's great. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Through this tunnel lies a different world four miles of heritage lottery funded restored canal through the heart of Stroud. I've met Dave Marshall of Stroud District Council, the lead partner in the restoration. Stroud District Council took over a restoration of the, this length of canal back in 2008. Since then we've restored four miles of canal, six miles of towpath, all the associated locks and bridges that go with that and in several places we've had to actually create new channel particularly in a place where the canal ran through a 1970s refuse tip in a site that's bounded by a slope, a river, uh, the railway and a main road so it was pretty difficult but, uh, but we've done it and here we are. Children and young people are a very important part of the canal project and in fact I'm standing here by a uh, playboat installed by Canes Cross Parish Council right alongside the canal and of course that inspires young people to think about boats. We've set up a teaching programme called Cotswold Canals Knowledge which use the canals as a resource for both teachers and pupils to learn about canals. Clearly canals have got a long history, there's a lot of social aspects to them, there are the environmental aspects and of course there's the scientific aspects of how they actually work. And so far we've had over 2,200 pupils from 33 different schools who've come to us. We also get a lot of young people coming to us who've got various special needs and learning difficulties and they work with our volunteers on various restoration projects so they're learning all sorts of skills. Canal restoration is all about transforming areas and what we've done here is to transform a canal corridor which if anything used to be a place to avoid into somewhere to go and that making the area more attractive has the effect of attracting inward investment. What we've done here is since 2006 attracted £101 million worth of external investment into the canal corridor. The really important part of this canal restoration has been the involvement of volunteers. Since 2013, so in just the last two years, 
they've put in over 48,000 hours, which is a fantastic figure. And frankly, they've made the difference. Without their help, this just would not have been possible. Now is the time to complete the canal, to connect it with the national canal network and to bring all those benefits into the heart of the Cotswolds.